Hello friends, what's up? It's Wednesday. It is later in the afternoon on Wednesday. Um, I was actually just busy this this weekend. As you guys know, my weekends are like Tuesdays and Wednesdays since I have to work on Saturdays and Sundays. So this is kind of my weekend. Um, I kind of I was kind of on like vacation mode for the last like two weekends again quote unquote that I was off because of course two of them ago I was at the beach and then last week I was in Atlanta so this is like the first two days that I've actually had off to kind of catch up on life <laughs> so I um, wound up having to go to get my car done I had to get an oil change you know all the boring realities of life but I'm here now Hello! Um, I did manage to finish a book in the past two days, so I am going to definitely be talking about that soon. But right now, I got some packages that I want to share with you guys. I got this, like, really mysterious package in the mail, and I have no clue where it's from. Like, I do not have any idea. I don't recognize the name that's on here. It feels like a book, but I have not, like, talked to any other companies really recently about having any books sent to me, so I don't know what this is. I'm very intrigued, though. Oh, 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 yes. Why did I forget this was coming? <sighs> I'm so dumb. Okay, yeah, I forgot that I got these. I don't know why I did not recognize this. So this says, um, I bought this. <laughs> lulz so okay this was first of all a super super pretty note um I, re I realize now why i couldn't figure out what this was so okay this is the harry potter box set of harry potter the philosopher's stone harry potter and the chamber of secrets and harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban these were the last three books that i needed to complete those books right there so the last three books the deathly hallows the half-blood prince and the order of the phoenix those are all true first edition uk edition books the um goblet of fire and then these three are actually all with bloomsbury but this is also the raincoast edition which means these are all canadian um and i was just having like literally the hardest time finding any books from the actual uk edition in these three and then i wound up finding the box set very cool i was so confused as to what this package was this makes a lot more sense so okay cool so now I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside and I will definitely be adding these over to the collection in just a moment but I did also want to go ahead and share with you guys what book I did just finish reading today and that is a darker shade of magic by V.E. Schwab and this one is actually one of the first books that I wound up having and annotating in in a while and I have forgotten how much much I love doing this it definitely like slows me down a little bit because of course you know you're tabbing you're annotating your writing and I, I haven't really been big on note writing in a while but I did take quite a few notes on this one because we are doing the live show for this book on Saturday so by the time you watch this that live stream will actually have already ended and happened but it will be up on Common Spence's channel channel and you should definitely go check it out if you would like um but i really want to make sure that i am prepared for this read along and i just i've forgotten how much i loved having and stuff and so i definitely do think that i will continue doing so um with my future books the only thing is that i ran out of tabs while i was doing this one so i do need to go buy some new tabs um and probably just like stock up uh, but yeah, so now that I have finished that book, um, I am probably going to go ahead and continue on with Aristotle and Dante. I know that I said in my last vlog that I kind of started reading it and then had to put it on hold so that way I could make sure I got this book done in the past two days. So I would like to go ahead and finish that one. Um, and then I'll only have one more book that I will need to read to officially complete my Newt's Magical Readathon, and I'm super excited about it. So friends. So, we are currently in my bathroom. Yes, I was extra enough to bring a tripod in here because I want to be able to talk to you guys and I can never seem to get a good uh, angle in here. So I brought my tripod. Actually, my dad's birthday. Uh, so we are going to be going out to dinner in about two hours and I wanted to go ahead and kind of get ready. Um, this is kind of my everyday like hair and more natural makeup that I wear to work because I do help with 
food deliveries in the morning, like room service in the morning. So I always like my hair to be up and out of the way. That way there is no way that things can happen, you know, food industry. Um, and I also am normally at work by like 6.30 every morning. So again, very low maintenance. Um, but since we're going out, we're going out to a nicer restaurant. I want to um, look nice, you know, I want to be a little bit more done up. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take this completely off because this is just some concealer, like kind of dabbled over my face, uh, some powder, um, and then brows and uh, and mascara so I want to do a little bit more um, and then I'm also going to do my hair and I kind of wanted to talk to you guys and update you on um, some bookish things so we're going to do that. First of all I know that I mentioned that I read this but I don't know I don't think I actually have talked about it so I did wind up finishing our subtle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. I loved it. It was just it was so good it was so good the emotions that i was feeling while i was reading this book like i just like the entire time i was just like oh my god what's gonna happen what's gonna happen with this with this people with this with these two boys i loved watching the friendship develop over the book and i kind of just like liked watching the family dynamics that was one of my, i think my favorite things was watching the differences between dante and ari's families but like still loving and like still loving the parents and how much they love their kids it was just great it was really really great uh, again i do not want to spoil so i'm definitely not going to be getting into any big spoilery stuff overall i think that i really 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 connected to Ari a lot um I because just kind of being more of that loner kid being more of like the one that likes to be on their own and not really be around a lot of people that is definitely something that I think a lot of us can connect with not just not just myself I think that that is like kind of a really big trait about a lot of people on the internet. We all kind of have that same thing of we like kind of be on our own, we're much more introverted. And I also really liked kind of the whole thing about the parents, especially the moms, kind of constantly talking about therapy. And I really liked about the fact that like, therapy was something that the families pushed for and it wasn't seen as like an embarrassing thing to do by the parents. And they're kind of like, you know, back in my day, we took care of our things on our own. We didn't get help from other people. Like that is definitely like the feeling that a lot of people have. And it's definitely too bad that a lot of people do feel that way and kind of push that um, way of thinking on their kids and I really really liked that that was definitely not the way that it was done. I also just really liked the way that we kind of got to watch Ari come into himself. We really kind of got to see him grow as a person so much in this book and I just admired that. All right so I think I finally have my foundation buff buffed in enough. I really don't love this foundation but I have it so I'm going to use it. I think it takes a lot longer to actually melt into the skin than other ones that I've used. It is the um, Alme Best Blend Forever makeup. I have this in, I don't even know what shade I have this in. I have it in 100 porcelain um, and I think part of it could be the fact that it has such a high SPF. It has a 40 SPF um, and I don't know if this is true or not. I have just been told that makeup with higher SPF for some reason can be harder to blend. I don't know if that's actually true or not. Now I'm going to go ahead and move into some concealer. I have no idea what concealer this is. The entire thing has rubbed off so I could not tell you what this is but it is in fair. So that's cool. Just going ahead and moving on from Our Subtle and Dante. So the next book that I was actually going to read, because that is actually the last official book on my August TBR that I still need to read. Like I'm so proud of myself. Like what I was going to do is I actually started listening to it on audiobook, and I was going to take it into work with me today to listen to while I got um, kind of all my parties prepped for this weekend. Um, and then as I was like listening to like the first chapter, I really realized that this is one of those books that I can already tell is going to be really amazing. And I am definitely going to want to be able to, um, 
take notes in this book and you know do annotations and all that and so I decided to go ahead and put the book down and just try to see if I could find like a fun contemporary book to listen to and finally I decided to go ahead and pick up the selection by Kira Cass and I'm already on like chapter five. I think that it is definitely very cheesy. Nothing surprising about that. Uh, there's definitely some tropes and there is kind of this whole thing. So she's like secretly right now dating Aspen. Um, and we just had this scene happen where he got really upset with her because he's in a lower class than she is. And she kind of keeps providing him like scraps of food whenever they secretly get together. Um, and then recently she just brought like this whole like kind of feast to their little like hideaway area and he like got really mad at her for doing that because he's mad that he is the guy of the relationship and yet he can't provide for her. She's the one that keeps providing for like for them. It's not like right for him. He feels like he should be the one providing and I'm just like that's just like so backwards. I'm not the biggest fan of it so far. I guess we'll see what will happen once the like real plot actually starts happening thing I wanted to talk to you guys about I'm just like completely shocked by how many releases are coming out in September can I just tell you guys I got um, I started planning my September TBR because I know that I'm gonna be wanting to film that pretty soon I might film it next week and I'm kind of blown away by how many releases there are. My TBR for September is going to be huge and I'm like actually kind of intimidated by it. Y'all, my battery died on me so I had to go and switch up my batteries. Um, and I was looking super, super shiny so I went ahead and put on this, uh, this, the powder on this side of the Wet n Wild Color Con Contouring Pack, con Contouring Palette. Do you want to do any blush today? I don't know if I do. Um, so let's go ahead and put my brows back on, I guess. And while I do that, let's talk about the fact that I'm, while I'm really intimidated by it, I'm super excited about the different releases that are happening in September. A lot of them are sequels. And I'm not going to get into it too much because I'm basically going to, because I'm going to be talking, of course, about all of them in my TBR, but... I'm just super excited. There's a lot of really, really good ones. And I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys yet, but I'm actually going to be off for the next like little bit because the resort that I work at closes down about a week and a half every year around this time to do like maintenance, upkeep, and that kind of stuff, and inventory and all of that kind of more boring stuff. And with the position that I'm currently in, they really do not need me. So I kind of like prepared for this time. That way I can just enjoy like being off, but not being on vacation. Like I'm gonna be home. So I'm gonna be able to get stuff done. And I'm gonna read a lot. <laughs> I'm hopefully gonna get a lot of reading done. Uh, so that way I won't be too far behind on all this reading that I have to do. So we will see what happens. But I think my TBR is looking to be about 16, 17 books in September. I don't know if I'm going to be able to read all of them and actually comprehend all of them. That's the big thing too, is that a lot of the books that are coming out in September are second, third books in fantasy series. And I want to make sure that I'm actually digesting it. I'm not just reading it and then immediately moving on and forgetting everything. And that is kind of what happened to a few books in July because I read a lot of books in July and there's some of them where I like look back at this at that book and I'm like I genuinely do not remember a single thing that I read. All right what's next? Let's do eyeshadow. Um, I don't want to get crazy with the eyeshadow. Do I look like a raccoon yet? <laughs> what a look. And I know what you may be thinking. Oh my gosh, Abby, you are actually talking to us instead of listening to an audiobook like getting ready? Crazy. I know. It feels weird. Holy crap. This is why I need to invest in this mascara. I genuinely forgot I had this little sample of the Better Than Sex mascara by Too Faced. I'm actually not a very huge fan of blush, to be fair. This, like, uh, you have to really be in the mood to, to wear blush. This is the Milani Bake Blush and Berry Amore. All right, now I just gotta figure out what I want to do for the lips. 
I feel like because my eyes are darker than I expected, I was at first going to do more of like a berry lip, but I think I might stick more towards the neutral. <sighs> I'll probably wind up putting on like a thousand lipsticks, let's be fair, that's what I normally wind up doing. I put on a bunch and, and make like my own custom shade because I've had some of these lipsticks for so long that I know exactly what the shade is. I know what the look will give me. It's like that is like made it a little bit more vibrant, but I know that's not the shade of vibrant that I want. So I need my, where are you? All right, I'm going to find my nude lipstick because this is a lot. Uh, and then do my hair. I'm super excited. It is almost time for the Darker Shade of Magic live show that I'm going to be a part of today. Uh, our like little portion before the live show starts is starting in about 20 minutes. We're all kind of getting together one last time to kind of talk about things and just be ready and kind of be in sync and all like cohesive and everything uh, about having this live show. And I'm super excited. So since I'm ready a little early, I did kind of want to show you guys how my setup is going to be. Uh, just so you guys can kind of see like the behind the scenes of what this looks like. So let's, let's, let's take a look. So I am first of all sitting on the ground on some pillows to make sure that I am super comfy for this live stream. Because I'm going to be sitting here for probably about an hour or so. So want to be comfortable um and then for the actual streaming i'm actually going to be using my ipad because when all of us got on google hangouts together a couple weeks ago i tried using my laptop and the quality was just not that great so i'm using my ipad instead i don't have a nice holder for my ipad so i am using books <laughs> how that's just so normal and then i have a light and a light to make sure that my lighting stays nice and even. I have the live show pulled up here. Um, it is, of course, on mute, just so that way I can kind of watch the chat and that kind of stuff. I've got my book. I've got all of my notes that I am gonna be, that we're gonna be discussing. And I am just really excited to get to talk to you guys about all this. Um, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Of course, the live stream will have already happened by the time this video goes live, but if you still want to, the live show will then just be a video on Common Spence's channel, and I will have his channel linked down below if you still wanna go and watch it. I bet it's gonna be really fun. I'm super excited. I'm a little nervous, but I think it's gonna be great. Um, and then, and yeah, that's really all that I got. I, um, I'm just, I'm nervous. And I think, oh, I need to go get a glass of water. That's what I should have with me. Um, so I'm probably going to go and do that, go and grab that. And then kind of settle in, kind of go over my notes a little bit more, make sure that I kind of know everything that I want to talk about. All right, so right now I really kind of want to talk to you guys about kind of three things in this little segment first of all one of the things i really want to talk about is the um live show that took place yesterday so yesterday was the first ever live show that i've ever been a part of and it was so much fun like so much fun I was so nervous when it first kind of got started. I really did not know what to expect, but all the other co-hosts have put me like right at ease. They were just so comfortable and so sweet. And, and the chat was just so active and you guys all had such amazing comments and like were agreeing and disagreeing and the discussion was just so good. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I'm definitely going to be continuing to read the next two books over um, the September and October time slates for the second and third book um as far as i know um spencer was wanting to have different co-hosts for every month so as far as i know um i was just part of the first one but i am definitely going to be taking part in the chat of the next two ones so definitely really excited about that it was just a lot a lot of fun i think it really helped me with my nerves about being live as i've never even done an Instagram live because I just felt so weird about doing stuff like that but I definitely think that I might start trying to do those kind of things in the future moving on to the next piece of news that I really want to discuss with you guys is the book that I finished reading yesterday and that is the selection by Kiera Cass so I wound up giving this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars um it is the weirdest thing because 
I read this book really with like really low expectations. It's kind of like the like the Shatter Me series where I am giving it kind of like that basic like three rate three star ratings, but I want to continue and I really want to see what happens. One thing that really kind of doesn't work for me is kind of the whole dystopian twist that the author tried to put onto this novel. So the whole like premise around this book series if you've never read it is it's about like our world many 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 years in the future when um our when like the cash loaning and everything finally gets out of control and russia and china or something like that um takes over goes to war takes over and all that stuff and then this guy by the name of gregory Ilias um winds up doing something saving the world and this this new world is called Ilias and then all the people are now done into a caste system so you are ranked by number one being royalty two being very like rich and wealthy all the way down to nine which are like the untouchables so they're like lower than low they're the lowest you can be um and America who is our main character is a five so she's like kind of in the middle of it all and it's basically the bachelor but in dystopian form so that's basically what what this is um I don't again I don't really understand the whole dystopian portion of it I felt like the rebels placed here to cause drama but they really have not done any significant damage quite yet they're very much a quiet variable it's like we don't know any of them we don't really have any big connections to them and so I'm feeling a really really big distance with that also go ahead and put this out I don't watch The Bachelor I did not go into this book with seeing the competition as the bachelor to be enticing to me like that's not why i went into this story i was not really expecting to like that plot and i was going into the book i was really hoping that there was going to be something else something more darker underlining the whole plot and there really isn't i think that's what the rebel plot is supposed to do that's supposed to be putting that suspense and that darkness in there and it's it's really not in this book at least i found myself sympathizing with america so much more than i thought that i would because at first i was like oh my god all of these girls are so annoying i don't understand like you know they're freaking out they're being like this they're being so petty towards each other but i mean really that's what this competition does like this competition is literally set to pit 37 women against each other and make them hate each other but still be polite and show the prince that they can have good manners you know and but then I really had to kind of step back a little bit and be like unlike in The Bachelor where most of the women are middle to late 20s possibly 30s I don't know in this America's 16 like she's still a baby you know and I just I remember thinking back when I was 16. I mean that was almost seven years ago now like I have changed so much in and I have learned and I have grown so much in seven years and I was so annoying at 16 so I can only imagine the mistakes and the self-doubt I'd be going through if I was basically shoved into The Bachelor when I was 16 years old. Like, I feel like she was dealing with a lot of situations with a lot of poise, grace, and compassion beyond her years. I think that was one of the bigger issues that a lot of the times I forgot she was only 16 because there were some situations where she acted beyond her years and then I would get to a scene where she acted a little bit more immature and then I got annoyed with her because I saw these rare moments in the book of her acting the way that a 25 26 year old might act in this situation you know I'm definitely interested in actually continuing forward I think that there's definitely some not so great things about this book like don't get me wrong that's why of course I gave it a lower rating I thought that the writing itself was super simple I thought that the plot was kind of all over itself I was really surprised by the ending of the book like where she kind of just like shut it out shut it down and ended the book and I really don't condone a lot of the scenes of America like kind of silently judging the other girls for their choices of wearing a lot of makeup of wearing more revealing dresses you know like that whole like women pitting against women thing 
I don't like it. And yeah, so again, three out of five stars. I was pleasantly surprised by this book. Again, this is not the turn of the century of a read. It's definitely dystopian cheesy rom-com <laughs> you know it's it has that drama if you are looking for a really fluffy fast-paced read with a little bit of drama tweaked in there for um reaction sake i think you could have fun with this book good morning happy last well good afternoon i guess happy last day of this vlog so let's talk <laughs> so today well technically yesterday but like today really starts kind of my week off this week I do go back to work on uh on Friday morning so I have today Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday off of this week and then I have Tuesday Wednesday Thursday of next week off so super exciting um what did I get done today today I woke up around eight and it was so nice to actually get to sleep in a little bit and then I finished The Elite by Kiera Cass uh I listened to this on audiobook I started listening to it last night and then continued it this morning the nice thing is since these are like shorter books um like the entire series is pretty short and I listen to my audiobooks for the most part on either 1.5 or 2 speed depending on the author and how fast they just naturally talk um I was able to get it done pretty pretty easily today. Later today, I'm actually doing some apartment hunting. Um, I'm keeping it like super casual because I don't really know what I'm wanting in an apartment yet. So I thought what better way than to go to some of the apartments in the area um, and just kind of see what sticks out to me. What looks really good? What do I want in an apartment? What do I not want in an apartment? What are some things that I could, you know, do without? What are my musts? Kind of that kind of stuff. And then, but then things I want to do until that time. My biggest thing is that I'm already falling up behind on um, all the light we cannot see. Yesterday, I only wound up getting to page 25, and I know that I said that I'm trying to do 100 pages a day. So I'm already about 75 pages behind. Let me also talk to you guys about The Elite by Kira Cast, because like I said, I did finish it. Um, so for the rest of this portion, if you don't want to be spoiled for the ongoings of this series, because I am going to be obviously spoiling for the first book of what's going on, um, I guess I would go ahead and put the timestamp right over here for uh, the next clip, probably, um, so that way you guys don't, don't get spoiled. So let's talk about The Elite. So I am giving this one, I'm having issues with this book uh, actually a lot more than the first one. So I can never remember what it's called, but there is something that a lot of authors try to do in their books. In this book, we have America, who's our main character, oh, and then we have Maxon, and then we have Aspen on the other side. So we have two boys that America is just really struggling with. They both seem to be like nice guys on their own, but they both obviously have um, traits of things that she likes and she doesn't like about them. And what the author is trying to do in this book is she's trying to basically give us boy whiplash. She's trying to make it where at one point we are so clearly seeing America's side to Aspen, so clearly seeing America's side to Maxon, and, she, and the author wants us to be like clearly voting for one character at a time. <laughs> um, persuasion. It's author persuasion. Persuasion. It's author persuasion. It is where an author is good at making you lean one, one way or another towards a certain character. And there are some books where that works in that series where I am suddenly like oh my god wait a minute I thought I loved this character but now I'm totally seeing the character's perspective and now I want this one. Oh well wait a minute oh my god now she's liking this one I totally want this one there's some books though where that persuasion does not work and I for the entirety of the book only care about one character and that is definitely how this series is for me. I am 100% on Maxon's side. That is who I want America to be with. Uh, I do not like Aspen. I do not like his character. I do not like how selfish he is being. I do not like the danger that he is putting America in by even being at the castle. And there's just, there's a lot that I do not like about Aspen. And so therefore, a lot of the scenes in this book, I 
didn't like. There were a lot of the scenes when they were together and they were talking and being together and being cute and sneaking away together. One thing that like really really shocked me was that even after we saw what happened with Marley and Carter and saw how they were treated when they got caught, America still continued to be with Aspen. There was really no scene where she was like, you saw what happened to them, therefore we cannot be together. That never crossed her mind. A lot of the respect that I had for America in the first book was definitely draining in this book. And she's just being so dumb. She just, I don't think she's understanding the grasp of how serious things are getting with the Rebels. I honestly am kind of disappointed with where this book ended as well because I was really kind of hoping that we would get to see America head back to her section and try to deal with the outfall of Rebels maybe on that end. For a while, I for some reason also had this just for sure certainty that her dad was somehow um involved with the with the uh, rebels i don't know why that was such a big thought in my head but that is like a really really big thing that i thought so the fact that that has really right now at least not really been confirmed or denied but also the fact that her dad basically gave maxon his approval for them to get married i just i don't know uh, and it's also kind of disheartening to see that the king is suddenly turning into the bad guy. I was kind of liking the fact that while he definitely seemed kind of intimidating, at least overall, the king and queen were kind of like good figureheads. So it kind of sucks that we're getting into this like stereotype of evil king, good prince trying to rise up. I feel like that's just something that's been definitely overdone before. At least in my personal opinion, I do not want her with Aspen and I think I, I will be walking away very upset if that is who she decides to be with. So I'm at least going ahead and getting that out now because who knows if later on she does decide to be with Aspen and that author persuasion maybe does get to me. Who knows? But that is kind of what I'm feeling right now. So I gave the first one a 3.5 and I think I'm going to give the Elite a 3 out of 5 stars because I definitely did not enjoy this one as much as the first one. But we will see what happens with the third one. Um, but for now, I am taking a bit of a break from that world and again, going ahead and jumping back into All the Light We Cannot See. So that's what I'm going to go do and I will catch up with you guys once I actually get a little bit further into that book. All right, my friends. So I did want to kind of show you guys this because I do think that this is important to share. Um, I'm going to see if I can get better lighting for this. Um, so as you guys know, I have been currently listening to this entire series on Scribd. I have been following along um, and doing an audiobook for it. And I have a lot, a lot of different um, audiobooks saved on here that I knew that I was going to want to read eventually. Um, so what you can, what's nice about it is that you can, you know, save them and then they'll all be right here and then you can just download them one at a time if you want and read them as you go. Now I had a really, really long list here for a while and then suddenly I came on here to go ahead and get the one, which is the third book in this series, all kind of like queued up and ready. And I came here and suddenly saw that a lot of my list was gone and then when I clicked this the available soon pretty much every book on my saved list is suddenly now available soon on September 14th and this is 43 books I did count them because I did send Scribd an email asking them like hey so does Scribd really do have like a limit of how many books you're allowed to listen to before they like shut it down for the month and then you have to wait? And if so, why are these the only ones that are still available? What's going on? Um, and it really sucks because I was planning on using this week and next week since I'm off from work as a way to catch up on some of these books. And I did kind of want to just share that information with you guys and when I do get a response from them I will tell you what it says just because I did kind of realize that Scribd was being kind of quiet about how many books were allowed to read a month since like is it truly unlimited? Do we have a only a certain amount of books we can read a month? I'm interested to see what's gonna happen so just wanted to share that with you guys and I will let you know 
what what they say when they get back to me hello friends it is monday night uh and we are going to be going ahead and wrapping things up for the reading vlog um i so really fast, I have not heard back from Scribd yet about the whole um, moving of available dates back on reading law, on books, on audiobooks. So I am having to wait to um, hear back and I will let you guys know either in the next reading vlog or I will go ahead and talk to you guys about it on my Twitter. It is Abigail Haley. I have it always linked down below if you want to go and join me down there on that social as well as any others. Um, but I am going ahead and just wrapping up for the week the books that I read and that is these four right here. So um, the first one that I read is Our Subtle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alray Sons. This one I wound up giving a 5 out of 5 stars. I thought that it was just fantastic. Um, I am already feeling the want to reread and annotate this book, so I don't know when I'm going to have time to do that because September is going to be a crazy reading month, but I am definitely feeling that um, that interest. Um, next one is going to be A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, which we had the live show for and it was so, so fun. Um, I also just realized too when I was putting all of my, um, like my ratings and stuff into my OneNote that this was the hundredth book that I read this year, which is crazy. I think it's actually kind of something pretty special about the fact that this is the hundredth book that I read and I got to kind of celebrate that unknowingly by having a live show about it. So pretty, pretty exciting. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I thought that this is a very, very fun start to a brand new series that I'm very, very intrigued and very interested in continuing. So I'm so glad that I got to read it and I'm really glad that I also annotated and um, wrote in it. So very cool. And then the last two books I have fully finished so far this week is The Selection and The Elite by Kiera Cass. I gave this one a 3.5 and this one a 3 out of 5. I think I talked enough about those two in this, um, this reading vlog that you guys kind of know my thoughts on that one. Um, and if you were interested with All the Light We Cannot See, I am currently on page 112. I think with this one, I have definitely decided that I am done, that I do not want to push myself with this one. So the subject material with this one is, of course, a lot drier because, hello, it's a historical fiction based back in World War II. And it is very, very interesting. Do not get me wrong. I have thoroughly enjoyed reading this first like 100 pages and getting to know these characters and it's so fun. It's just so, it's a very big difference between the last two books that I just read being a dystopian series about The Bachelor. It's very, very different. So I am definitely not breezing through this book as quickly as I did those two. I am definitely, I'm writing in these, stopping quite a bit and looking up different words and terms and then writing the translation. There's a lot of French in here. Uh, I'm writing the translations in the sides. I am also making very, very sure that I am keeping up with where we are at in the timeline. So I've been writing writing down um, on each marker of like where we are based on the first chapter of the book. I definitely want to make sure I'm staying um, kind of attached to the timeline so I've been doing that and it's just it's a very very good book so far. I am thoroughly enjoying it and I just kind of want to take my time with this one. Unfortunately I definitely do not think I will be done with this by the end of the month. Uh, it is the 27th of course I do technically have until Friday to get this book done in order to have it completed for the new readathon for the month but I again I just don't want to push and I don't want to rush this type of book so um, if I don't finish it that is all right um, but I do I, I do think I'm just going to continue reading probably not even the whole hundred pages every time maybe just like 50 pages here or there uh, but I am really enjoying it um, 
So yeah, that is going to be it for this video though. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Please give it a thumbs up if you did as well as hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell right beside that lets you know when I make new videos. You guys should also comment down below letting me know what, how many books have you guys read this month? Are you guys fast, slow readers? Let me know how it's going. How is, how are you doing with your reading challenge? Have you guys surpassed it? Are you still trucking along? Are you getting there? How's it going? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you guys. And I will see y'all in my next video. Goodbye!